Okay, well, here we are in Princess Avenue in uh, Vancouver, Canada. And uh, you hear about these things, but it still takes your breath away when you actually find it. So these transmission lines, they go up to towards the dam and the cable cars that go up to the hill with big tourist attraction. And we were there yesterday and we had enormous magnetic fields coming off the transmission lines going past. And I tracked it on the map and these are the ones that are leading into Vancouver towards the east side. So anyway, I've got a yellow battery. Um, I've got a Gauss meter here. This measures in nano Teslas. Uh, you can see on the, the green line on the top, nanoteslas. So, in relation to magnetic fields, um, basically in a bedroom environment you would like to have ideally 30. At 100 is where the bad news starts. This is ironic because the government exposure standards, depending on the country you're in, are about 100,000 to 80,000 nanoteslas. And so they don't think any of this is a problem. So I've got 1,780 nanoteslas standing here. I can feel it in the back of my neck. It's tension. Um, so people are also familiar with milligauss, which is another unit of measurement. So you just divide through hundreds. So this is 17, nearly 18 milligauss, standing right underneath them, which is, you know, kind of expectable, you know, to be expected when you're standing right underneath it. But then right next door, we've got residential properties. And that's where things are not looking good. All right, so let's keep an eye on this thing. So 20 milligauss, 17 milligauss, or 1700 nanoteslas. All right, and so now I am already further away from these cables than this house is. 1200 nanoteslas. 12 milligauss. Okay, now to put this a little bit in, into perspective in terms of research, in streets where 4 milligauss or 400 nanoteslas is prevalent, um, there's more cases of childhood leukemia. Multiple studies show that, where we've got eight here. I'm already past this blue house. Uh, studies in melatonin and its natural anti-cancer action link exposure to down to 2 milligauss or 200 nanoteslas to melatonin being blocked in its natural anti-cancer action. These people are I'm further away than this house is from the cables now. They've got 4.7, 4.8. I mean, we see bad things in our line of work. You know, we, we assess homes and they're not really average homes because they're homes of people that are have chronic health issues and they're just not getting better. And so we work to improve their sleeping environment because that's where the, oh, the story just gets better. Sorry, it gets worse. Look what I just noticed. Let me zoom in a bit. A nice cluster of cell phone transmitters, also in the backyard. Um, yeah, so we see, we don't see the average, we don't see the average house. We see houses where people are sick. Um, so we see, you know, no doubt worse of the average. Um, and you always pray that this is not there because you can't shield against magnetic fields. They penetrate everything pretty much. Um, well, there's stuff you could use against it, but so expensive, you would move house. Um, so, you know, you always hope you don't have this. Magnetic fields can be produced by wiring if there's a fault with that, and that's then fixable in most cases. But um, if it's from an outside source like this, you got no hope. Um, all the other stuff we can deal with, radio frequency radiation from cell phone towers, um, electric fields from the internal wiring, that we can deal with. And we do that all the time. And you just hope that magnetic fields are not the problem, and they often aren't. But Sometimes they are, and this is probably the worst street I've ever seen. All right, so these people, right, look at the lines over there. 
these people probably sitting in uh, a good 300 nanoteslas, 3 milligauss. It would certainly be past the bulk of their house now, still looking at a good 3 milligauss. Oh, sorry, uh, 2.9 milligauss, 300 nanoteslas. So yeah, to continue on that research, so two, down to 200 linked to melatonin being blocked in the natural anti-cancer action. Uh, 160 nanoteslas or 1.6 milligauss research showed that it doubled the chances of sperm abnormalities so now we have cellular change um <laughs> there we go look at that um one hundred milligauss Keep in mind that the, uh, the government exposure standard is 100,000 nanoteslas or 1,000 milligauss in most countries. Um, I th think perhaps Canada is a little bit less. I think it's 833 milligauss or something or 83,000 nanoteslas. Cool. So now here it starts to drop. See, so I've got about 60 nanoteslas, 0 0.6 milligauss whilst it's not the 0 0.3 that you're ideally hoping for i wouldn't move house for these sorts of values right if you were buying something you'd look at something that would be hopefully less see so these people are fine unless they're sensitive to radiation that might give them a little bit of grief but i doubt it all right so let's backtrack now we go back into the fields and we can see where this starts Right, so anyway, to continue, um, research into children with leukemia, when they were looking at their mortality rate, to spell that out, that's how many of those kids didn't make it, they found that if the kids were exposed to between 100 and 200 nanoteslas, or 1 to 2 milligauss, um, the mortality rate was 260% higher than the kids not exposed to just 2 milligauss. Okay, so now it's starting to creep back up. See, now it's starting to creep up fast. So, just in the scope of that side of the street and here I've gone from sort of acceptable to sperm abnormalities, immune suppression in kids with leukemia, which really is an immune, su immune suppression in all of us. And it's just as always sad when you look at a, a group of people that are close to death that you can see if a medicine or a poison, um, if that affects health, you know, they swing the right way or the wrong way real fast. And so you see that, All right? And so here we are at 1.6. Now we're already heading into the 200, two milligauss. Here, all of a sudden, real quick, it goes up. All right, so hate to think what those houses are exposed to, but just to, uh, of course, curiosity gets the better of me so let's have a look around here things increasing decreasing a little bit now also remember that this is caused by current so the use of electricity and of course the usage of electricity varies changes depending on what people are using wow do you see that jump Let's see if that drops back again. Yeah. Very big change in scope of a few meters. There could be some interaction with the water pipes here as well, but as in if they've got copper piping in the ground, that could have a, an influence on it. I think that there was something we passed underground that might have added to that reading because there was a very sudden increase and decrease but 
So all these houses, I mean, I don't want to step onto the people's property, but here I'm already looking over 100, over 160. So that's over one milligauss, over 1.6. And so, uh, yeah, not good. What do you think? Anyway, so yeah, I, I'm always, I've seen this before, you know, areas where there's magnetic fields, you see the properties just going for sale, sold, six months later, they're back on the market. I just wonder what the turnover of properties is here. I mean, goodness, oh, that's so sad. Look at this gorgeous house. I think of this in their backyard. Do you notice also the um, directional transmitter on there, that round dish? That's where it gets its data from. Because this thing has electricity connected to it to power it, but not necessarily data. So the data gets beamed up from a transmitter down below. And so this whole area is also being blasted by this radiation coming up to that little dish. Because you would hope that would be sniper technology, but it's not it's shotgun technology. You just blast the whole area trying to hit that little dish. And then it's those vertical panels that talk to the cell phones. Right, so this reading has nothing to do with radio frequency radiation. This is just current, magnetic fields from current. If there was a path in between, I would go and have a look. So now we're at 100, 130. Now it's not necessarily uncommon. You'll find that uh, you know, in suburban streets sometimes. And that's the reason why you must measure this before buying or renting any property. Regardless if you can see the power lines or not, by the way. Underground they can be just as potent. All right, so now we're far enough away, these bushes. Now we seem to be out of that zone here. See, so now we're at 66 or 0 0.6 milligauss. just over the hill but of course these houses are still also being blasted by the cell phone tower so 50 all right just turn this around right so you know as a EMF consultant you always hate to be the bearer of bad news uh, and yeah, you know, we also we can't really tell people to move. You got to come to the decision yourself. Uh, now, just uh, before we get into that, um, I've got my uh, RF meter here as well for radio frequency. Look at the tower behind us. Can we see that? There it is. All right. So standing here, it's indicating when I hold onto this antenna. So my bo my body is the antenna effectively. Looking at 3,100 microvolts. Okay, so we'll walk down the hill a little bit, see what we got, but I don't think that would uh, vary all that much. Fifteen hundred, sixteen hundred, two thousand, eleven hundred. Twelve hundred, fifteen hundred, eighteen hundred, twenty two hundred. Yeah, it's all very sad. Uh, and that'll be, be yeah, also coming through the houses. The building materials will dampen it a little bit, but not so much. Um, but it, that you can shield against. You know, that, that burden you can relieve uh, the family of, but the magnetic fields are here to stay. So, yeah, anyway, in relation to these magnetic fields, the advice I can give to anybody watching this who doesn't live on a street like this and doesn't want to live on a street like this, um, buy yourself a decent quality Gauss meter. Spend more than $100, $150, please. It's a big decision, depends on it. Don't buy something 30 or 80 bucks. You know, you get unreliable information in my experience. Um, 
and go measure, go and look for those levels. As I mentioned, one milligauss is where the bad news starts, or 100 nanoteslas, depending on what your meter might read. Um, and, uh, you know, 30 nanoteslas or 0 0.3 is ideally what you're after in a sleeping environment. Um, then, before you sign anything, lease or purchase, um, get a professional EMF consultant like myself or somebody I trained or some of our colleagues um, to come and double check your work. We'll come in with very fancy expensive equipment, we'll double check what you've measured, we'll investigate the electric fields and the wiring which is always a problem or mostly always a problem but that's fixable um, and then the radio frequency radiation and uh, see if that's fixable. We'll have a quick look over here by the way. So that's 1600, 1300 you always go on peak value because that's what the body has most trouble with. Uh, yeah, so, you know, measure before committing to anything. Uh, now, for those people who live on this street or people who live on those very similar streets, um, yeah, you've got to make your own decision. We can't tell you to move um, because the government thinks this is all no problem. Uh, the research I was talking about, they'll just say, well, there was some reason why we didn't take that into account because there were only 120 kids in there, so that one didn't matter. And that study, well, they didn't do that, so that one didn't matter. And so there's missing loads and loads of uh, research. Um, there's plenty of it. Now with radio frequency radiation, Wi-Fi, 4G, and goodness, 5G, um, there's about 20,000 peer-reviewed research studies, the majority of which indicates that there is harm from EMFs or you know, electronic pollution. Um, so you have to make your own decisions. Is this a good long-term strategy to stay here? Um, and if you decide not to, um, I'd love to see you somewhere else. Um, of course, selling this house to somebody else, knowing this, um, yeah, that's a an ethical dilemma um, that I don't envy you for. Um, but yeah. All right, I hope this uh, was interesting. Uh, I'm sure that the people that follow my work are suitably horrified by what I've just found here. Uh, those who are new to the subject, you have no idea how many people are already clued in on this whole problem. Um, if you want to know more, um, you can follow me on Facebook. I give a lot of free information, especially to people who befriend me and follow my page. I have a profile and a page. I have a podcast channel. Uh, it's called Health Stronghold. Uh, you can find that on iTunes, Twi Twitter, and <laughs> Stitcher, Spotify, all these sorts of mob. And um, I also have a website for myself personally uh, at stronghold, healthstronghold.com, where the podcast can be found and some. Q&A sessions, videos that you can watch. So, yeah, anyway, um, uh, good luck. <laughs> and, um, yeah, we can assist you anyway. Um, let us know. All right, bye. You know what the sad thing is? Whilst I've been doing this, well, first of all, nobody came and asked me what I was doing. Um, yeah, anyway. But there's a... There's a hiking track underneath them. And whilst I've been here, hordes of people are looking after their health and going for a hike underneath the transmission lines. Can you imagine what that does to you? It's so sad. Anyway, um, should you want to purchase a Gauss meter, um, it's not difficult to use a Gauss meter. Um, but without any instruction, you probably won't feel very confident that you're using it right. Um, I have some online courses for amateurs. Um, when you buy a Gauss meter of those brands I've got a course of, you can actually learn lots about EMF um, and um, learn how to use that specific meter as well. You actually see that meter in action and so you'll feel a hell of a lot more confident using that um, and being able to revisit that information and watch those videos. All right. Good luck, everyone.